Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number sixty nine. Yeah, baby, sixty nine, sixty nine, sixty nine. We were talking Beatles a little bit before the show. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> can't help it. Yeah, yeah. Watch the Beatles thing on Apple. It's fabulous. If you're a Beatles fan. You know, if you're a Stones fan, you'll go, oh, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's time for Tech Talk. And if you've got a question for George and I about your home voiceover studio or technology related to that, throw it in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook, Facebook or, or YouTube. YouTube uh, and we will answer that question because George and I thrive on that kind of stuff. So get those questions in now we've got lots of great stuff in your tech update with all sorts of cool stuff that you're going to want for christmas right some of this is new tech yeah all right <laughs> tech talk voiceover body shop coming up right now from the outer reaches they came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio and together from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B.S. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Time for some talking about tech. Uh, but we need to, as we do with every show, we need to lead off letting people know what it is that you and I actually do. Why are we even qualified to talk about voiceover studio? Tech? Because we've been doing it for a long time, you know, probably a combined 30 years. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> plus. Yeah, and plus. I mean, I started doing this during... Our DAC backgrounds go way before voiceover. Oh, well, I mean, I, I started during the Nixon administration. <laughs> or the wire recorder? No, it was that was wire was about 20 no, years I'm before just, that. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, but we've been doing this a long time. And the fact of the matter is, as voiceover has accelerated as a potential profession... Uh, over the last 20 years or so, nobody's really worked with people to f do their home studios. You started working with the big boys like Don LaFontaine and, 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 and some of the other guys. Well, he's like half the reason I thought this should be a full-time business serving these this this audience because he literally told me they install, install all this stuff and then they disappeared. They don't tell me how to use it. They don't how to do anything. And I don't right. have, I'm like, geez, this is a need. So yeah. that's, that's how we discovered this industry needs help. Yeah, yeah, and and people are writing to me all the time. How do I do this? How do I do yeah. that? Because I would, you know, write something in Facebook or a blog somewhere. Yeah, and uh, the wife's like, "You really should put out a shingle. You don't give away thirty years of knowledge that simple." So I started doing it, and then George and I met up, and we realized that there's a collaboration here that will help you guys. Uh, we work independently from each other for the mm -hmm. most part, except when my phone rings in the middle of the night. Uh, and, um, you know, my, pa my paper is going off or an occasional webinar <laughs> or an, exactly. And, uh, we help you with your home studios. We will teach you if you have no idea what you're doing, we will teach you how to do it and we will do it quickly. 
if you Whether have you're just starting out completely from scratch or maybe you've had well 20 years ago i was a full-time voice actor but now this stuff is all scaring the heck out of me what do you, what do you mean you have to record yourself uh, right you know i was talent yeah whatever the case we'll we will help you yeah. out if you've got a technical issue we can help you out if you have questions come watch our show like you're doing right now if you're watching live and ask your questions and we will clarify for it but if you would like to work with us each one of us professionally mm -hmm. and actually have you either come into your studio or do a zoom session with you make sure your settings are correct make sure your acoustics are right you can work with either one of us and if you want to work with George, who has all sorts of great services, where would they go? They would go to georgethe.tech. Oh, that's it. right. There and if right that there. confuses you, georgethetech.com also works. Um, you can check out my VO Tech services menu on there. There's also a ton of free information, including my reinvigorated blog, where I'll be posting a lot of answers to questions that I see uh, come across on Facebook. So. That's all over at georgethetech.com. And Dan's home on the web where he helps out a ton of voice actors is... Homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, and we're in the process of rebuilding the website. So, you know, I'm trying to catch up to your website. Well, we'll my be... website needs to be rebuilt, too. We're, we're both in that process. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. It, it is a lot of work. you have something that works, it's very hard to make something better. Right. Than what already works. So if it's not broken, why fix it? I know. It's, 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 why it's still there. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and the same, the same applies to your home studio. Are you getting work? Are people telling you your audio sucks? Then you maybe want to work with us. But if it's, if it's, if it sounds yeah. good, it is good. You have the specimen collection cup. I, I have do. The sound check. That's where you can go to start right out of the gate and make sure your audio is where it should be. Right. You know, for, and for $25, you know, you go into the specimen collection club, a uh, cup, you click on that. Send me an MP3 with specific instructions on how I want it structured, and and I'll listen to it. Usually within five to ten seconds, we know exactly what's going <laughs> on here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, oh, it's okay. There's some background noise. You know, there's hissing in there. Okay, they're not using their their mm -hmm. interface properly. The mic's facing the wrong direction. Yeah, it happens a lot. <laughs> Why does it sound muffled? We'll help turn, you out. Turn the mic around. <laughs> uh, you know, it's stuff that. And what's amazing is that nobody teaches this stuff. There are so many voice coaches out there, people who teach voice acting, and so many of them are utterly clueless as to this technology that you and I spend our time and days helping people with. That's right. And we tend to mop up after them <laughs> an awful lot. So what's in your... Should we get into the... Yes. Tech update. The tech update. Tech Lots update. of cool stuff and stuff that you're going to want for well, under your tree. Let's see what we got here. Well, I, I am using, and I do now have my new MacBook Air M1. Ooh. I had, and it's got a cute little cover on the back. Oh, cute! Thank you. Um, Mine's coming this week. This, and you've got one coming. This is, I, so you guys have been following me. I, I've had the, I had the original MacBook Air M1 that I ordered the second it came out a year ago, and I decided to get another one. Why? The only reason was, as I wanted extra memory or RAM. Um, the, my original one had eight gigabytes and it was fine most of the time, but I was still getting the occasional error message saying you have used up all your memory. Um, and there was just some a little bit funky behavior. Now I don't, I wouldn't have known to attribute it to memory unless I didn't also own a Mac mini M1 with 16 gigs of memory and that computer, which I'm using all the time, um, has been flawless. Like it just everything just works without a thought it's just instant and reliable so i thought maybe i should just get the macbook air m1 with 16 gigs now i could have bought the macbook pro and believe me i was just as excited as everybody else watching the, the apple release on it and it was just so much more money for features that i and pretty much all of you guys watching just simply don't need um it's also heavier and thicker Hmm. It's a it's a significantly chunkier computer. So because it's housing hard, heavier duty hardware, a bigger battery, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, I've been very happy with it. Now it does have Monterey. So if you've bought a MacBook Air since November, I guess when they released the new ones, it's gonna have Monterey on it. Okay, so that's a little fair warning. What? You might be okay. Yeah. But what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> that means that's the latest, latest, latest Mac OS. They do a new one every year, usually around October. 
The one we've been using for the last year is Big Sur uh, 11.0, and now we're on Monterey 12.0. Um, and it just means that because it's bleeding edge new, you may have some surprises. You may not have perfect compatibility with your audio hardware, your software. So if you go and plunge the money into one of these things, you, you might take a little while to transition over to it. Maybe copy your user account over and test it out on everything you need right. before you sell the other one. <laughs> Don't trade. The worst thing to do is to trade in your old computer. Do uh. not do that. First, you don't have a backup. And second, you get the worst possible amount of money for it if you trade it in. Keep the other one for a while and test it out. It, I haven't gone through a full-blown, like, try everything, throw everything at it. But the things that I normally would play around with, like Twisted Wave, W Audition, now Source Connect. Thankfully, they have upgraded for Monterey. Those are uh, seeming to be running okay. I would not up upgrade an older Mac prior to Silicon like an Intel Mac, mm -hmm. I wouldn't upgrade that to Monterey because Monterey was written on and designed specifically on the new Silicon machines. doesn't mean it won't work. It just means that a lot of the benefits aren't going to be there. And there's, there have been, and I have an article I found on osxdaily.com saying that there actually were some people having their Macs be bricked when upgrading to Monterey uh, in the mm -hmm. early days. Bricked, um, mean, meaning? bricked meaning like... The computer does not boot up afterward. Oh, like so in that, later, it's literally it's really a brick. It's a brick. <laughs> okay. This is very much, this is an outlier, but it, they said in the article it happened enough to make, to make mention of it. It wasn't like a one random occurrence. So anyway, stick with Big Sur or older OS on an Intel machine. If you're on the modern Silicon M1 type machines, being on Big Sur or Monterey, you're probably going to be fine, but just tread lightly and back up before you upgrade anything. Um, yeah, I'll give a full report when my M1 shows it. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're dog fooding it, as we like to say. By <laughs> Where do you come up with this stuff? I, That's a software Dog term. fooding? Dog fooding <laughs> is the, the idea that if you're going to make dog food, yeah. you have to eat it. Because if you oh. don't eat it, you don't know if it's any good. That's why they call it dog food. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Makes perfect sense. <laughs> um <laughs> Um, again, I mentioned it quickly, but if you are on a brand new Mac uh, MacBook that has Monterey, um, you were kind of mm, a little uh, in a bad place with Source Connect for a couple of weeks. But yes, they it scrambled, it. Mm -hmm. and now you can uh, load and run Source Connect on the Monterey Mac M1s. So you're good. And I've tested it, and it does work. Um, in terms of gear, um, Earthworks is an interesting microphone company. They're, they're not one that you've probably heard about, talked about in context of voiceover at all. Right. Um, it, Nether Voice, our friend uh, Paul Strickward, Paul Strickard, uh, he yeah. reviewed the, the Earthworks icon, and he thought it was a great mic. Now, the Earthworks Ethos is their, is their current release. I just discovered it. It's a $700 Broadcast style microphone. Broadcast um, style. Well, I know what that usually what means. I, what that means is that you talk into the end of it. I actually have a picture of it here on one of my tabs on my browser here somewhere. Here we go. There it is. Thank you, Sue. Um, there's the Ethos on the left. There's the Icon Pro on the right. Um, it's kind of interesting because now they're selling two mics that really kind of overlap. And it's it's, I'm not really sure what the major benefits are of going up to this new $699 model. Um, but they all have the common, uh, the common design of using a very, actually oddly, I would almost say, small diaphragm uh, inside. You know, the mics that we talk about the most by far tend to be large diaphragm condenser mics. I'm scrolling down to see if I can find a, a picture of the inside, but they don't uh, they don't they don't show it here on their site, but if you go on YouTube, type in a review of Icon or Earthworks uh, Ethos, and you'll find pictures of them taken apart. The actual capsule inside is really tiny. Yeah, and that doesn't mean it's going to be inaccurate. Actually, they're extremely accurate. The downside of the little tiny capsules are they need uh, they tend to be a little noisier. And I, before the show, I was talking about this with Dan. I was like, Dan, do you know why small capsule microphones are a little bit noisier than large diaphragm? And from my basic knowledge of <laughs> physics, 
I, I surmised an answer of, well, small, small uh, diaphragm mics are designed primarily for music, as is almost all the stuff we use. But specifically, small diaphragm mics are used for drum kits, mm -hmm. for they horns. Handle, they handle much higher, higher SPL. PL, sound higher, pressure levels, yeah. yeah. And therefore, you don't have to apply as much gain to them. So they don't think a whole lot about on the back end of where if a mic is noisy. So if you don't only have to turn the gain up so much, you're not going to hear the, right. the sound If you're noise. miking instruments, horns, drums, things like that, you don't need a lot of gain. It's if you're trying to record something very soft, the 16 decibel self noise that they uh, say that this mic has could be a little bit high. Yep. Now, where does that fall among other popular mics? That's actually right on par with a Sennheiser 416. So it's not bad. I mean, yeah. that mic is used constantly. Like that one. <laughs> uh, in pro, pro, pro context. But if you're kind of looking for the quietest microphones available, it's not going to compete with really quiet mics because they tend to be large diaphragm. I was reading a little bit about the, the, the differences between them and what makes one, you know, why does one need more, make some more self noise? And essentially, the larger the diaphragm, the more sensitive it is. So it just simply needs less amplification to give you the same kind of output. Whereas a really small capsule needs more amplification. More amplification means more noise generally. So that's, that's the reason for that. So anyway, um, Will I get one in my hot little hands? Who knows? I don't know if it works. I mean, if, if it's, it sounds more like if they're calling it a broadcast or, well, now a podcast mic, I guess. It's, I mean, that... Obviously, oh. this is what they were thinking of it for is broadcast. I think, but it's capable of, what I would say, is voiceover pro quality. Yeah, depending on what capable. you're doing. Right. Yeah, it's certainly capable, but it wasn't designed for voiceover specifically. And that's because there's not... Even today, a very small understanding of what voiceover actually, voice actors actually want and need. Right. That's <laughs> our job. <laughs> it's really, like, even some of the biggest companies out there are still selling a totally low sensitivity, sure microphone to voice actors. A mic that's designed to be used very up close, right. taking very high levels, shouting even. It's 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 just the wrong microphone for the job. Right. We keep telling them this, but they're like, yeah, you know, it still ends up in the catalog every that, year. That's right. Um, <laughs> some interesting new products that also popped up, and I'm, I'm going to say this is the most hilarious use <laughs> of VU meters. Uh, in Throw me my VU meter there. It's right behind the the no 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 right next to the the board there on the right hand left hand side of the board. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Throw me that. Beautiful prop. Yes. Here is a VU meter, <laughs> right? Imagine these attached to your headphone ear cups. Well, you don't have to imagine it because here they are. <laughs> this is the, this is the, uh, the, the brand is literally called Meters Music. Uh, notice the name mu Music. Um, Why? They're, they're music <laughs> headphones. Uh, they're Bluetooth headphones. Um, and they have VU meters backlit view meters wow. big beautiful backlit actual not Im, not simulated not led little displays yeah so but if you're but wearing actually, them and you're like what what's my my what you're not gonna be able to turn far I enough know. to see what's going on literally like, zero. your eyes can't go that far i know it's, it's all it is is just so that other people near you go Ooh, look at the needles. <laughs> or maybe so that your parents can go jimmy i see the needle going into the red turn it down <laughs> And then you're going to put tape over it because you don't want your mom to yell at you. Anyway, it, it's got an app that lets you adjust the, the response, which actually, oh, that's, that's cool. kind of cool. It's got yep. a tone control. Um, but you can control the color of the LED lights on your headphones. Anyway, this would be a nifty Christmas gift, kind of a fun thing for the friend in your family that would like this stuff. If it wasn't so crazy expensive, <laughs> these are well over three hundred dollars. Oh, for crying out loud! Um, you know, and I think it's it's it, if it was like a, I think under hundred dollars, it would be a super cool nifty gift for one of us. Uh, but I would never imagine uh, <laughs> I would never imagine anybody buying one of these for for anybody as a gift unless well, you just you know you're in that kind of budget range for right. gift giving. Um, but anyway, I thought those were really uh, really interesting and funny almost. Um, in a much more serious note, um, talking acoustics, uh, there's a company 
really brand new to me called Pro So Acoustic. Um, and they're making a, an acoustical panel called the Wave Pro acoustic panel with built in diffuser and, and it has also interchangeable fabric. Ooh. So, ooh, if decor is important to you in your studio. It's cool. So, yeah. So, there's, to me, this product has two innovations. One is the superficial one, which is mm. you can change the fabric. Right. Now, that, that, that's impossible to do. You can just pull the staples off and reupholster. But the way it's designed is there's a groove, and I'm hoping I can see enough detail. Here is a picture. They, oh, they yes. milled a groove into the back of the panel. Groovy. Where your fabric tucks in, and then it uses those screen door or what, screen strips. Oh, right, right. To hold the fabric right, in. Right? Use a little roller thing. Yeah, yeah, use that little screen roller thing, and you can just, so you can easily peel off the fabric. What if it gets stained or dirty? You can take it off, replace it, clean it. Even. Is it a specific fabric that they would use on there, or can you just go over to like Joanne Fabrics and find something you like better? Well, that's a really mm -hmm. good question. You know, the key with acoustical fabric is it needs to be acoustically transparent. Right. Sound should be able to pass right on through without being uh, changed. So, yeah, you can use. There's a lot of fabric that could be used. There's no reason why you couldn't customize it and give it an interesting look, which is kind of cool. And then the thing that makes it acoustically unique is the way they designed the the panel itself. Oh, it has two functions. It's an acoustic absorber, so that's the the front layer behind the fabric. Right. That's the typical mineral wool rock board. It's actually rock board forty. Uh -huh. I actually tell you what it is, which is cool. Um, and then behind it is this hard backing, but it's been it's been milled and machined. Uh, using a wood CNC machine, apparently, uh, apparently we know somebody has one of these. Yes. <laughs> we might have to, we might have to make one. Um, but uh, and so, so the idea is that the sound not only gets has that, it, not only is it acting as an absorber, it's also acting as a diffuser. I mean, what sound that does make it through the rock wool hits that surface and then is scattered. Right. And this is a very specific pattern. Hmm, does that pattern remind you of anything? A sand in, painting primarily, but it does a little <laughs> bit. But does it remind you of like a certain certain kind of lens? Yes, like a Fresnel lens. Boom. Oh. So this is an acoustical this is an acoustical Fresnel lens. Ah. Like this is using the science of Fresnel what a Fresnel, what a Fresnel <laughs> lens is. <laughs> I, I don't know that. I know that some guy named Fresnel, and it looks like Fresnel because there's an S and it's silent. <laughs> but uh, it's it's an acoustical version of that, and uh, it's very interesting science. Anyway, there you go, and it's in a panel. Panel. It's it's a two hundred dollar panel, so it's a lot more expensive than a lot of the other panels of equivalent size. ATS is a company that comes to mind. They're like sixty dollars. These are about two hundred dollars. So. I, it'd be interesting to experiment with it. For $200, you know, they better be damn good. <laughs> they better be damn good. They have nice mounting hardware. I see that. They, um, I could see investing in a few in a small space in a larger studio would be very costly. But it's interesting to try it out. I, I looked at the measurements, the actual measurements, and you, you would still, in a small booth, like a 4 by 6 you would still need base traps. It's not a substitute for that. So I'm curious to see how it could make a sort of a stuffy, small, very, very dead sounding little VO booth sounds slightly more lively, lively, yeah. but not like ringy and bad. So Andrew, if you guys want to send me one, I'll try it out. Um, <laughs> and last tech thing, and this one's a nice one because it's free, free, free. Um, from I, and I, I didn't know anything about this company. There's so many companies that make plugins. Yeah. It's, it's overwhelming. Um, but uh, a friend from uh, the Pro Audio Suite, uh, one of our producers, Robbo, said, hey, check out Melda Productions, M-E-L-D-A. And they have a bundle of plugins called the M Free FX Bundle. I think it's like 37 plugins. Is this, do you need 37 plugins? Heck no. But there's some good ones on there. And I just wanted to try it out briefly. And I tried their equalizer. Mm-hmm. Because to me, the the one plugin that a lot of people needs is a better equalizer. If you're using Audacity, mm, especially, yeah. even the EQ and 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 Twisted Wave is is okay, but not the best. It is a really really good replacement for the EQ and Audacity. 
and it's really cool the way it's designed. It, it's very interesting the way it works. When you click on a band to adjust it, mm -hmm. it, it filters out the rest of the audio. So the when you click on it, now you're only you're listening to, to that, that one band. band. Oh. Yeah, and so it's very easy to kind of dial it in very quickly. So is it adjustable with each band, like a parametric, or is it strictly? It is a parametric. Yeah, it has parametric. that kind of graphical interface. Yeah. Uh, do I have it on a tab in my browser? Let me see. I do, but I don't have a, let me Let me jump back. I installed it, but I don't have a screenshot oh. of it, so I'll have to we'll have to check it out later. But I played around with it. It, it. It's free. Anybody can install it and download and play with it. There's a bunch of plugins, and if you're not liking a plugin you've already got, give it a shot. It's 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 what I call nagware, meaning it's totally free. But the so the plugin reminds you at the bottom. If it's you would just like to give donate. us a little <laughs> bit of money, we can make this little bar go away at the yeah. bottom. Alms which, for the poor. Yeah. No, I, I like that business model. And of course, they sell like a much more comprehensive uh, plug-in package right. if you want more stuff. But it's it's a nice it's a nice tool to uh, supplement. Uh, anyway, last thing I just want to mention real quick is a note on troubleshooting. I, I think we'll make this our discussion for tonight. Shall we make this our discussion? Because this is something awesome. you and I do all the time. Awesome. I love it. Um, <laughs> this came up recently and because uh, a client of ours, she's using Reaper. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say why she's using Reaper. Just somebody at somewhere along the way said, this is what I use. So this is what you should use. <laughs> you should use Reaper. Now, Reaper for me falls into a category of more of like Pro Tools. Right. Right. Woefully complex. Uh, much more feature set huge huge feature set that a voice actor could ever need extremely high level of customization definitely the geeks in the world of audio love this because it's so customizable made for making music yeah <laughs> made, for, made for making music doing complex stuff um i had a client whose software all of a sudden just had weird behavior she'd hit play watch the little play cursor go across and then two seconds later she would hear what she sees on screen Everything's oh, out so of sync. delay, yeah. Right. And, you know, I, I had a, a limited amount of time to troubleshoot it. And I remembered some time ago, some smart person at the Genius Bar said, let's just install, let's just set up a new user account and just try running the same program. And the problem went away. Yeah. When and, in doubt, reboot. Yeah, this <laughs> is like the next level of reboot, right? <laughs> we tried the reboot, that didn't work. And, and I remembered this, this tip and the reason why that tip worked and why this is the moral of the story. Okay. Sometimes giving a fresh start to the software will clear out the problem. And yes, you will have to restore maybe manually your preferences. Right. But something well, got used, corrupted inside yeah, the original program. I used to program. have the VU meter on the right, but it's now it's on the, okay, you're going to, you might take 15 minutes rebuilding it. But that troubleshooting process to find out why it was doing it would turn into potentially hours. So that's, that's a really critical thing with troubleshooting. I mean, sometimes it's not about figuring out why it happened. It's just figuring out how do you get back to work quickly? How, how have you dealt with problems like that in your own, in your own studio? Do you, do, you t do, you, do you like to get into the, why is this happening? Or do you just want to? Move it on. doesn't happen to me often. That's good. That's the yeah. thing. I mean, it we, is pretty rare I've, I, that I've seen a problem like this right. happen. Right. I mean, I've used the same software for probably ten years. You know, I use Adobe Audition. I'll use Twisted Wave. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll I have the other ones. I have Audacity and some of the others, so I can demonstrate stuff to people. And I still use a Twisted Wave for really long format stuff because mm -hmm. it, it's really easy to uh, to divvy up files with it. Yeah. But I've very rarely had a problem. Uh, because one, I maintain my computer. I make sure that, you know, there's always enough, uh, drive space yeah. and things along those lines. But when I encounter problems with people who are, you know, having software issues, you know, you and I will do this. We'll go into their computer and say, okay, what, what are the settings? What's going on here? You know, why can't they do this? And it's usually a mouse click, something, some menu somewhere is not click. I had a client last week where it's like, I can't move this thing in pro tools. And I, I, I'm not a big Pro Tools person. I don't use it, you know, but I know how to read a menu. You know, was it a Vietnamese restaurant last night? I was like, I was able to read that, but I can read a menu in software, <laughs> hole in the wall place, but the food was fabulous. Um, 
if you understand how to run through menus, that's really a good, uh, another good spot to, to, uh, to jump mm-hmm. in when you're troubleshooting, uh, mm-hmm. because that's usually where the problem is. Unless something is doing like what you were saying, it's, it's doing something that is erratic. That right. generally indicates that there's a something's corrupted in the file somewhere. A preference file or a preference mm, database. Exactly. Or there's a driver issue, especially if you're on a PC. Yeah, there are a lot more driver issues on Windows the, systems. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's always the first question, Mac or PC. Mm-hmm. And if they say PC, I'm like, let's, let's check your drivers. Let's, let's see what, what driver the drivers are you using doing. right now. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. All yeah, right. It's it's troubleshooting is a, is an is a, it's an art as much as as it is a science, and I, that's just something. That I know we really pride ourselves on is getting to the root of the problem rapidly and not spinning it out into a long exactly. process. So, all right, we've got questions. Just write them in the chat room in Facebook or on YouTube, wherever it is you happen to be watching, and we would love to answer your questions as specific or as non-specific as possible. <laughs> we'll be right back with Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voiceover Body Shop. Let's face it. If you're a voice talent, not everyone in your family or close friends really understands what you need for your home voiceover studio. You want a what? Well, VoiceOverEssentials.com has the perfect answer when it comes to birthdays and other gift giving for us voiceover folk. New for the first time ever, after countless requests, VoiceOverEssentials.com is thrilled to offer the VoiceOver Essentials gift card. You pick the amount you want to give, and they take care of the rest. The recipient will receive an email with their digital gift card and gift code to use on anything they offer on VoiceOverEssentials.com. Give them or give yourself the gift of getting exactly what you want, like the Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone, the Portabooth Pro or Plus, Harlan Hogan Signature Series VoiceOver Optimized Headphones, a lot of what? Go to voiceoveressentials.com and click on shop and gift cards and choose the amount. Gift cards now at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Helen. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. <laughs> just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Source elements. Source, source elements. elements. Source elements. So are you guys familiar with source elements? You're not watching the show if you're not, because we talk about it all the time. But it's, they're one of our lovely sponsors. They've been supporting us for a long time, and they've created this thing called Source Connect. They also have a, a pretty wide range of tools. You definitely want to go to their site and see what they what services they have, because they have all kinds of ways to collaborate. So I know a lot of your voice actors, you just want to be able to connect to a studio. But you'd be surprised what some of the tools are in there. And you might find ways that you can better serve your your actual clients by making better use of their tools. And some of them are just ways to better collaborate. You know, that's what you're going to find over at Source-Elements. But most of you, Source Connect is, is the thing you're probably the most going to be requested to use. And you can get started with that by just getting a free trial. You can get a demo. Uh, head over there and go to source-elements.com and sign up there and avail yourself of the education they have there. They have a lot of information about the way the software works. They have very well-designed uh, site that helps you through the process of getting it set up. And you can get yourself a demo running so that when someone says, hey, are you a Source Connect equipped voice actor? You can say, yes, yes, I am. Um, and that's going to get you the better paying gigs for sure. Anyway, we appreciate Source Elements for your support. And let's get to those questions. Come on. 
Let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. All and right. we're back. Right. We are back. And we got a few questions to deal with here. Ah, uh, let's see. You start reading them and I'll keep an eye on the chat. Oh, okay. Too. Let's see here. Questions, questions. By the way, you and I are doing a webinar. Oh, yeah. Next week. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. We're doing one with VoiceOver Extra on Wednesday the 14th mm -hmm. at 5 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, you can register over at VoiceOver Extra, one of our fine sponsors here. We're going to do a lot of you know question and answers, but sh it's going to be very personable. We're going to be talking specifically about things that people need to do to get their VoiceOver audio up to snuff quickly. And then we will answer questions, and, and we'll have time to go into a, you know a, a lot little of more detail. detail. And you know, sometimes people are a little bit bashful to ask or ask their questions in a public forum like this live right. stream. So this is a great kind of a safe place to come and, and talk about your your home studio. Exactly. Needs, so yeah. So go on over to Voiceover Extra and look for our our webinar, because uh, I know John will have this big poster of us there. Uh, and we're looking forward to doing that. So Yeah, me too. All righty. First question for tonight from Dan Alpern. Mm -hmm. Any updates on the mineral wool versus fiber for a home studio? Converting part of a home office space to booth soon. Thanks for all the great work, team. All right. Thank all you. Right. Uh, mineral wool, wool versus fiber. Well, Which like fiber? fiberglass, I think. Uh, maybe if you're talking about fiberglass. Yeah. You know, there's... a there's, there are some changes in the uh, way fiberglass is made now, um, depending on who you talk to. Some would say fiberglass is really just as safe, just as, just as low and low toxicity now as, as other products. Um, and there are some that still believe the best acoustical panels are made with soft, loose fiberglass, like pink insulation. Right. Um, but in the, in the real world of a voiceover studio where it's a really cramped space, you don't have the luxury of using big, thick, soft battens of, of acoustical or, or fiberglass. Right. Now, there are, there are compressed fiberglass uh, materials as well. But for whatever reason, they always seem a lot more expensive when you're comparing products. Because you've got to compress the fiberglass. I guess so. I guess the <laughs> and process glue it to together, make it, the, the bonding, the glue. Yeah. I guess it's kind of expensive. The um, OC, Owens Corning. Uh, OC703 mm -hmm. um, tends to be pretty pricey. So I, I still tend to, to, to almost always universally recommend products made with the, the rock wool rock, like type rock material. And stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, rock board. Uh, there's a couple brands. Uh, uh, Safe and Sound is what you might find at like a, your big box, big box hardware store. And um, it is becoming more like commonly available now. You can actually just order it from... Home Depot or Lowe's and right. get the stuff cut in two by four sheets ready to make panels. Now. Yeah. So I got a bunch of it sitting in the side of the garage here. Oh, good to know. <laughs> if I want to make a panel coming up here. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm still leaning towards the, the, the mineral wool style of product. If you're comparing the two. All right. Next question Next from Ron M. Interested in George's long-term thoughts on the Presonus Revelator IO24. Have seen some complaints about noise. Have you seen this? Would you recommend the IO24 for a voiceover talent? It's an excellent question because I think the way you and I would use something like that might be very different from, say, what a voice actor is. You know, the more complexity you have in something, if you don't understand what that complexity is for, it's a lot right. of money for stuff that you're never going to use. Right, right. It, 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 I kind of look at it is as a... Uh, you know, a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 with a very complicated uh, software mixer built in ah. um, <laughs> so is what that one is. So if you don't have the need for things called mix minuses or loopbacks, and if when I say those terms, you've never heard them before. You don't need them. You don't need them. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what a channel strip is, you don't need it. Um, it basically takes something as, that on the surface looks as simple as a Scarlet 2i2 um, and adds a tremendous amount of features internally. And uh, where's that coming from? Outside. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the security camera. Never mind. It's the security <laughs> camera. Don't look. Um, 
No, it's it's a very very interesting that you're really just getting a ton more software features that are kind of built into the box. Now, I've been using one personally now in my home studio for about two months, and then I've not had any problems. Good. I have read the comments or the reviews that you have. I have seen a few people say they're hearing noise, probably from their headphones or maybe their speakers. It hasn't been my experience yet. I will say that Personas definitely has to prove themselves with their with their audio hardware, their, especially their USB based stuff, because I've seen a lot of it not perform that well. Uh, either it's noisy, or it doesn't last for the long haul. So, you know, knock the wood, as my girlfriend would say. <laughs> I would say, I hope it. I hope it proves to be a reliable long long-standing good quality piece of gear as it's proven to be for me right so far right um, i do like that i can set a high pass filter mm -hmm. so i use the channel strip to make sure there's no rumble getting into my mic um, i do use it for live streaming as we do as we're doing tonight so i do take advantage of the additional features i do teach webinars i do additional things that voice actors don't typically do and so i really do take advantage of the extra service features that are built into it so not everybody needs those things no the, the thing is is most of those things are really for producing more complex material mixing music over you know underneath the voice over mm -hmm. um which is where the whole phrase comes from uh and generally unless you are a commercial producer or you you're a creative person that's doing this stuff for other people you really don't need all that complexity you know, you and I use it because, you know, we do webinars and we do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, teaching online. Training, live streaming. Absolutely. Live webcasts, right. podcasts. That's what mixers are for, for live mixing of, you know, of, of content that you want to get across. So if you have a microphone and an interface, that's generally all you need. Uh, unless someone says, can you mix music with this and all that? Then you've got to learn multi-tracking, which is a whole nother skill. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, they rolled in this four track Atari reel to reel machine in my radio, my production studio one day. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, but you, I still had to learn how it worked and then creatively learn how to use it. You know, there were certain things I'm, I'm sure I would did things with that, that the designers never had in mind. You know, I've always been able to take technology and take it to the next step, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then not tell anybody about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <so. laughs> but yeah, I, you don't need anything that sophisticated, especially if you're starting out. It's not the equipment that gets you work. Mm. It's how you use it and your knowledge of how to use it. So don't go out buying this stuff because you think it's going to make you a better voice actor. None of it's going to change the way you read copy. Yeah, more, more, more often than not, unless you have a proclivity to want to learn new tech and you really enjoy that process, the additional features that you're getting with these more sophisticated interfaces become a distraction yep. or even confusion. And if you're doing a lot of live directed stuff where you're being, you know, re re being recorded live over Source Connect or something, that can end up being embarrassing if you don't know how to fix something on the fly. Right. So, you know, be careful when you're going into these newer techs, yeah. newer technologies. Yeah. Um, Patricia Andrea has an interesting one. She says, okay, I have a question. All right. Uh, raising hand, hand emoji. All right. <laughs> now I have not yet truly heard my own voice. Interesting. Okay. Um, I guess meaning recorded. Okay. Um, her own re recorded voice. So any tips on how to approach this? Um, I just got the computer. I have the interface and I have speakers and the whole thing. So now I'm just ready to plug and test. So what do you recommend to use as a guide, if any, or just schedule before plugging anything in and blowing out a fuse? So she's, she's wondering, like, is, is you have a place to, what, what should I do next? I guess is what she's saying. I have all this stuff. Call us. What do we do next? <laughs> exactly. It's pretty simple. Talk to someone who knows exactly what they're doing. We're the guys to talk to. I mean, because we deal with someone, you know, it in your experience level every day. Right. Uh, we, don't, we don't work one-on-one -on -one mainly with engineers. We work mainly with actors uh, and users that are not tech geeks. Yeah. You know, we, we, we really try to make sure we're not intimidating you with jargon 
And we are really careful to teach what you actually need to know right now. Exactly. Not something that would be really helpful for you ten, helpful for you 10 years down the road. No, it's what you need to know right now to, to get professional quality. Yeah. That's uh, what you're going to learn. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have the addresses. You know where to find us. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, it's, in terms of a generic user guide, it's, it depends on what gear you have. You know, it depends on the size of your studio. Right. It depends on the kind of mic you have. Um, it does, there's a lot of peculiar, uh, particularities about right. the equipment you're using that in a 30 minute session with Dan and I, we would get through, we would cut through all that very rapidly. Yeah. You know, so I would say that's your best, yeah. your best I, move. I find that people tend to buy the equipment before they know what it's for. Someone will recommend something to them. And, you know, like an, an SM7B or, a, you know, an RE20 or something along those lines, you know, dynamic microphones and things like that that are clearly wrong for voiceover. There's some very specific things you don't want to spend you start out spending a lot of money because the money's not going to get you work. It's, you know, you can start off with a, a good USB mic and learn how to set levels properly and make sure your acoustics are right. Mm -hmm. uh, because the acoustics of the room are really the most prime Super thing. Critical. Very, very critical. Yeah. And, and a so-so studio condenser mic in the right environment will sound just as good as anything else. Yeah. And there's no engineer out there that can tell the difference unless you have a really crappy mic. Yeah, uh, if it's and, making a buzz or right, a or, hissy, hissy sound. Or the frequency response is really limited. You yeah, know? I it mean, sounds muffled. Yeah. If you buy a $40 USB mic, you will not get very good sound. <laughs> Probably not. Probably and if, and if not. It, even if you were lucky enough, it would not last long. Yeah. Um, Jim McNicholas asked a question about some very high tech gear. Okay. Uh, he's like, George, are there any updates on the Apollo issues? So I would love to know what the Apollo issues are you're referring to. <laughs> uh, well, there were a pile of them before. You well, were... there were issues like three or four <laughs> years ago or even maybe a year and a half ago that I was hearing about. Of, I think he's talking about the whooshing waterfall sound issue. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Jim, it's interesting. I, if that's what you're referring to, I haven't heard a peep about it in, I don't know, a year? It's been mm. a long time. So whatever like bad batch of you know, components that they had in their factory when they built those seems to have, it seems to have run their course. It mm. seems like they've corrected it because I, I have not heard a single complaint about an Apollo flaking out, making noise or anything. And yeah. you have a, a face, year. you have a Facebook group about Apollo issues, don't you? I do. <laughs> I do. In fact, I, I posted recently on there, it's called, um, universal audio Apollo for voiceover. Yeah. And I posted a survey on there saying, is it time I just take this form down? Because there's <laughs> there's one on, you know, specifically for Universal Audio. Right. Um, a lot of people are like, no, 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 we still come here for help, you know? <laughs> uh, but I do have a group on it. It's a good place to, to share information about the Apollo for voiceover. And we did have a very long discussion thread that was spearheaded by um, Tim Tippett and, and myself. Tim Friedlander was in there too. But yeah, long story short, I think those issues are past. I think they've resolved them. I haven't heard anything about the whooshing problem. It feels like for a year. Oh, okay. You know, so thankfully it seems to be uh, it seems to be pretty solid. Yeah. And the thing and the thing is the Apollo Twin, it's a fabulous unit. I mean, it, it you know, it sounds great and all those things, but people tend to buy it for the wrong reasons. You know, it's like they buy it because you can add all these plugins because it's really no different yeah. from any other interface. It's just a little it's, more well, sophisticated. Well, it's just, it's very related. It's, it's kind of related to that uh, Personas uh, Revelator. The Revelator is kind of like the Apollo and the Scar. It's kind of the, the, the Goldilocks between the two. <laughs> it's it's just nowhere near right. as in, in, incredibly, uh, it's nowhere near as expensive um, as the Apollo. It's not as simplistic as the Scarlet. It's kind of like right in between. It does a lot. It does some things better than the Apollo. The Revelator has much better sound drivers. Mm. It's much easier to understand how you can send audio to something and bring the audio back and where it's going to go. Much easier to understand on the Revelator. But the Apollo has the, the, the additional functionality of all of its plugins. And that, to me, can be a pro or a huge con. Because it's a massive distraction. 
people get really caught up in, well, don't I need the Manly Vox Box plugin when I'm doing promo and trailer? They get, they get, they get obsessed with it. So if you're trying to replace some old rack gear that you've always used, say like an Avalon 737 or a Neve, something, something, and you want it to be all in one box, the Apollo is, is awesome for that. If you're just looking for the next thing from your Scarlet, eh, I'm still not going to be excited about recommending it. It's just, it can be distractingly complicated to use at times, especially monitoring. Monitoring can be really confusing. So yeah. just be careful. Right. Jeff Rowland asks, questions. yes, I was going to use Reaper, but after hearing George's comment, I'd like to hear your DAW suggestions. Dan, you said your favorites already. Well, I, yeah, Adobe Audition. Again, Adobe Audition is a little more complex if you've never done any recording before. Yeah, it's a little more complex. Uh, sure. You know, I, like I said, I've been doing this a long time. I understand how it works, what it's supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. you know, the multi-tracking and, and, and the effects you can throw. Because I, of course, I believe all effects should be done in post. Nothing should be done up front. Um, but, you know, Adobe Audition is great. Yeah, it's 20 bucks a month, but I find it, you know, more than worth it. Uh, Have you upgraded, by the way? Oh, Are I, you I'm using the 2022? 20, oh, absolutely. And how's that going? It, seamless. Do you think it was, I think there was something funky with 2021. Did you have Did, yeah, early on issues? there was an issue and they they patched it okay. and and it, and and it started working. Yeah, okay. I, sometimes the the spectrograph would disappear and all you would have is the the uh, waveform. Okay. And, and so we, they 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 fixed that problem before they released the 2022 yeah, version. No, okay. it's been it's been rock solid, you okay, know, cool. especially on the M1. Uh Twisted Wave if you're on a Mac it just makes it See these, there there are people who are like, well I learned on Pro Tools. Yeah. Uh, I get that. If you learned uh, 15 plus years ago, right? You either probably learned on Cool Edit, right, or Pro Tools, right? <laughs> One of those two. But the thing is, is it may be more sophisticated than what you need. Yeah. And uh, as we like to say, Pro Tools and and Logic and some of these big multi-track programs is getting a control room for a nuclear reactor to control a hamster running in a wheel. There's not a <laughs> whole lot going on there. And there's things that you don't need to do. If you get your sound right up front, that solves a lot yeah, of problems. Yeah, Reaper is highly customizable. Yeah. It's much, for people that like, like controlling their tech and getting really into the customization, it's great. For people that just want to be productive, Twisted Wave is really awesome. I didn't catch if you're on Mac or Windows, but if you're on, um, on uh, yeah, I didn't catch that, whether you're on Mac or Windows, but... Um, if you're on Windows and you want something that doesn't cost you monthly, I still wouldn't go Reaper. I start with Audacity or WavePad. Wait, I was going to say WavePad is a yeah. real popular one. Start with one of those. Yeah. yeah. Or, or there's, there's, um, Ocean Audio, which Ocean, is O-C-E-N, which, -E -E which yeah. is very, very simple, but it's got a spectrograph, which I really like. I haven't even tried that yet. Yeah, no, it, and it, it, it works pretty good. It's a lot like WavePad, mm -hmm. only it's free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then of course Audacity, which is also free, well, and Audacity has, gets better and better. Yeah, and and there's a lot of professionals using Audacity because ones and zeros are ones and zeros. Yeah, the the software itself does not sound any different from any other software. It's what you can do to manipulate the audio, which I keep telling people don't do if you don't know how to do it. That really makes mm -hmm. the difference. So. You have been Last warned. One, and this is a really quickie because we already answered it. Right. Uh, VO asks, any info on Source Connect Standard 3.99 compatibility with Mac OS M1 Silicon? It has been supported since pretty much the very beginning um, on Big Sur, and they just released their update for Monterey. So if you're on a new, brand new M1 that's stuck on Monterey, you are okay with Source Connect 3.9 because they have an update. So you're good to go. Excellent. All righty. That's well, it for the questions. That is all. And uh, we thank you for your questions. We thank you for joining us. But we still got a little bit more to talk about. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back to tell you all about that right after this. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. <laughs> When I speak with actors about adding audiobooks to their voiceover quiver uh, and doing so through my class, the one I teach with Dan O'Day called the ACX Masterclass, 
they say, look, we know it's a valuable class. It's, it's got all the things we need. It's really expensive. Do you have a payment plan? I, I usually have to say, no, we don't. But now I can say, yes, we do, because we're going to do a special four-month payment plan that reduces your four monthly payments down to uh, an amount that would fit in anybody's budget. And then on your fourth payment, we start the class, right? The beginning of uh, 2022. So you don't even have to remember that we're opening the doors on this on December 20th. All you have to do is go now to acxmasterclass.com. Take a moment, do it now. Join our alert list, and we'll let you know when the doors open on this special four-month payment plan for the ACX Masterclass. That's acxmasterclass.com. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. We're going to wrap it up. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're, we're back. We're back. All righty. Well, uh, next week on this show, well, we, we have to remind people, we, def- we have a webinar coming up. And if they're watching this, it is coming up this Wednesday night. Okay. It's Wednesday. Gotcha. So if you're watching this on Thursday the 15th, you missed it. <laughs> so but you can get a recording of it you can still you get can a recording go, go over to voiceoverextra.com that's v-o-i-c-e-x-t-r-a.com and look for our webinar and uh, we'll be george and i will be there doing what we do here but a little bit more in depth so it's it's worth it for you to drop by for that uh who are our donors this week oh uh, let's take a look here I, I have in my calendar that the webinar is on the 14th Tuesday. Is it the t- is Tuesday the 14th? Yeah, okay. That's what I it's have. Tuesday. Cut. Edit. It's <laughs> Tuesday. It's Tuesday the 14th. <laughs> I just wanted to be sure, but I wanted I don't I want to make sure. I've been doing that. that. You know, I just went on <laughs> Medicare. Oh, you did. So uh, the brain is not. I, I mix up dates and things it's like okay. that now. So I wanted to double check. It's okay, important. I'm glad you did. Um, Tuesday the 14th. Tuesday the 14th. Go the to VoiceOver Extra. In which case, if you're watching this on Wednesday the 15th, you, you missed, missed it. it. Get the recording. Yeah. All right. Who, so Who are we going to do? Thank, thank some donors? Thank the donors. I get to do it again? Uh, we can alternate. Oh, let's do alternate. Okay. It's more fun. Uh, we got Rob Ryder. Patty Gibbons. Greg Thomas. Shana Pentington Baird. Uh, yes Icon Productions. Don Griffith. Stephen Chandler, Sandra Manwiller, Robert Leadham, and Antland Productions. Hey, Uncle Roy, how hey, you doing? Unk. The greatest Pez collection out there. Maybe ne- oh, no. Well, oh, we have a rival. Oh, I and I had I know somebody else with a humongous Pez rival. selection. There's apparently it's quite the thing. <laughs> When I see Pez, I just eat it. And I they really, don't take up too much space. That's well, yeah, and you can it's line better than a refrigerator up. collection. That's right. All righty. Uh, if you want to work with George, where do you go? You go to, head over to georgev.tech. And if you want to work with Dan, go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, although people write to me and call me George. And I'm sure people write to Jeez. you and say, call oh, you Dan. You're the guy with the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I shaved it all off tonight. I didn't want to be confused. All righty. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. Demos. Alrighty. Our thanks to Sue Merlino for... 
coming in tonight and joining us here actually in the studio. All We've been doing this remotely for so long. I know. It's much more fun when everybody's together. Uh, uh, so we thank her for doing a great job tonight. And, of course, Lee Penny, because he's Lee Penny. <laughs> What else, what else can Somewhere we say? Somewhere in Arizona. That's right. Well, you know, kids, as we say every week, this is not an easy business. There's a lot to learn. But when it comes to your audio, if you get it right, if you get your acoustics right, if you get your mic right, you get your level set right and your technique, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widom. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. B.S. Have a great week, everybody. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk.